In section 7.2, we talk about solving linear systems by substitution. Typically, this is the, the method that we learn second. Usually, graphing comes first, then substitution. So, the idea behind this method is that whenever I substitute something uh, in the real world, substitution. The idea is that when I substitute something in the real world, I'm taking something that is equal or almost equal and putting it in the place of something else. So a substitute teacher is considered an equivalent to the teacher of the actual classroom, at least for the intents and purposes of conducting class on that given day. Or in a recipe, you will sometimes substitute things in based on allergies or not having the right materials. And so if you substitute uh, oil for butter, you're saying that those are close enough to the same thing, that everything should work out well. I am not a cooking person, so I don't actually know if that made um, sense. That's what we're going to do, is we are going to use this idea that if I know what one thing equals, I can use that as a substitute for something else in order to solve these problems. So on example one, we're given a system of equations because we've got two equations. And what we want to do is use the substitution method. So the idea is that we need to know what either x or y equals. And in this case, they've given that information to us because they've told us here that y equals 2x plus 18, which means that I can take the y in the other equation and I can substitute in 2x plus 18 because that's what y equals. y is 2x plus 18. So I can put it in for that equation. So to do this, I write down the first equation the way it is written right now, except when I get to y, I'm going to put parentheses and then write what y equals, which is 2x plus 18. And then that equals 20. Now I have an equation that only has x's that I can solve for x. I do that by distributing, adding like terms, and using our normal rules for solving an equation. So I have negative 4x, negative 6 times 2x is negative 12x, negative 6 times 18 is negative 108, and then it equals 20. So now the idea is that I have like terms with my x's over here on the left, so I'll add these together. Negative is negative 16x and then this is just a two-step problem. I have to add the 108 over and divide by negative 16. And the worst part of this is just that we actually have some kind of big numbers that we might we might find difficult to work with. But otherwise this should not be too bad of a situation. Now, there is a trick here, because I don't know off the top of my head necessarily what 128 divided by negative 16 is, other than that it is a negative. But what we can do is simplify either by dividing by 2 or 4 or even 8, and then that will help us figure out what divides. So if I simplify by 2, I get 64 over negative 8, and that's something that we should know how to divide and that will give us x is negative 8. Now when we think about a system of equations, we have an x and a y, and so our answer needs to be an x and a y. We know what x is, so let's go and continue our problem and find y. We're going to take what we know x is, and we're going to substitute it again. We can put it in either of these first two equations, but the easier place to put it will be the equation that's solved for y. Because what I can do is say y equals... 2 times negative 8 plus 18, and I can just figure out what that is. If I plug it into the first equation, I'll have to do a little bit more solving. Either one is fine. We just want to, as much as possible, do the easier thing as far as math goes. So 2 times negative 8 is negative 16. Negative 16 plus 18 is 2. So x is negative 8, y is 2. We write this as a point, x comma y. This is the point where these two equations intersect if we were to graph them. 
we don't have to graph them. We did it by hand and it didn't ask us to graph them. But that would be another way that we could solve this problem is to solve the first equation for y and graph them. And we should see that, oh, they intersect at negative a comma t. So that's our answer um, because it has both x and y like what we wanted. We could always go back and check this by plugging back into our equations and seeing if what we get really is true, like putting the negative 8 right here and the 2 right here and saying that would be 32 minus 12, which is in fact 20. Then we would do the same thing on the second one. If that's true, then we can say, yes, I know that I did this right. Or I can be pretty confident that I did it right. So that's the idea. And all of these problems are going to work similarly. In this example, we start off a little differently because we don't have an equation solved for a variable. So we're going to have to do that work ourselves. Now, technically, we could solve for x or y in either equation and get the right answer. But there is an easiest way to do this. And so whenever we can, we do in math want to pick the easiest way because the problem in math usually is not the concept itself that we're trying to work on. It's usually the simple math that gets to us. So we want to be as easy on ourselves as possible. So the best thing to solve for here is the y in the second equation. The reason is because there's not a number in front of y. Now, technically there is. It's 1. But what we're going for is the fact that when I solve for this y, I won't have to divide by anything, which means there's no way that I could end up with fractions because all of my numbers right now are whole numbers. So if I look at some of these other choices, like if I decided I wanted to solve for 2x or for x right here, well, I'd subtract the y over and then I'd divide by 2. And because this has 1 in front, I'd end up with y negative y over 2. Well, that's a fraction. Fractions aren't in themselves bad just is not super helpful to us at times um, to do it that way it's easier to make a mistake whenever we have fractions so we're going to solve for the y that already is by itself with no coefficient in front right now we're going to subtract 2x from both sides to get that y by itself y equals negative 2x minus 4 and now we're at the point we were at in the first example, where we know that y equals something. And we're going to plug it in to the other equation. You always have to plug it into the other equation, not the one we just used. Because if we plug it into the one we just used, we will not get the correct answer. Um, it will get what looks like a special case. Uh, and that's not what should happen. So 7x minus 2 times y equals 19. So where y was supposed to be, I substituted in negative 2x minus 4. Now what should happen is the same steps that I did on the last one, where I distribute and then I add like terms. And then have to subtract and divide. And so what should happen to us is that as we practice problems like these, it should start to feel kind of repetitive. And that is actually a good sign for us that we're getting the hang of it, is that once it seems repetitive, then that means that we've got the steps down and can do them faster. Because these problems can take a lot of time when we first start out doing them and aren't used to them. So as we practice, as we get the hang of the steps, it should go faster. We're going to take x equals 1 and plug it back in to, si to solve for y. The best place is this equation right here, but we could plug it in someplace else and still get the right answer. So negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. Negative 2 minus 4 is negative 6. So our answer as a point, x comma y, is 1 comma negative 6. This next example, there's not anything actually that's more difficult about it. It does use different letters. We're used to using x and y and then coming up with a point x, y. So when they give us different letters other than x and y, um, the general accepted practice for writing a point would be to write it in alphabetical order. So if c and d are our letters, then we would write our answer as c comma d is in the alphabet 
C comes before D. Um, if there were other letters that they were using, we'd just figure out which one comes first in the alphabet and put that one first. And then most people would understand what we were talking about. The best thing to solve for here is the C in the first equation because it doesn't have a number in front of it, which means that we'll just need to subtract 2D from both sides. And that gives us C equals negative 2D plus 7. So we're going to substitute that in for this C right here in our second equation. So that we've got negative 8 times negative 2D plus 7 plus 2D equals 16. And then I'll distribute and add like terms just like what we've had to do on the past couple. So 16D minus 56 plus 2D equals 16. 16 plus 2D is my like terms. I'm going to add 56 to both sides. And divide by 18. 72 divided by 18, I may not know off the top of my head, but if I know that they're both even and I can divide by 2, then I can simplify this to something like 36 over 9, which I should know how to divide, so that I get d equals 4. Now that I know that d equals 4, I go and plug it back in to find the other letter. So c equals negative 2 times 4 plus 7. So c equals negative 8 plus 7, which means c equals negative 1. So my answer, since I want to put c first, is negative 1 comma 4. And that's pretty much all there is to it. This last example is going to show us that, you know, they can set it up a certain way that we might want to use a different method at first because of the way it says it, but we'll look at how to use substitution anyway. What I mean by that is that here we have two equations solved for y. When we see equations solved for y, a lot of us will automatically think, oh, that's great, I can graph that. Um, but it asks us to use substitution. So here's what we would do to use substitution on this method. If y equals 2x minus 6 and y equals negative 4x plus 24, well, if I substitute in 2x minus 6 for y, it'll go on the left side. And on the right side, I have negative 4x plus 24. And so what happens if both of these equal y, then they also equal each other. Um, so it actually is really easy to use substitution when we're solved for y for both. Um, because now all we have to do is get our x's together on one side and get 6x, add the 6 over, and get 30. So we divide by 6 and get that x equals 5. Then it doesn't matter which of these I plug into because they're both solved for y. The top one has smaller numbers, so that would be my preference. 2 times 5 minus 6 is 10 minus 6, which is 4. And so my answer is going to be 5, 4 for that problem. So that's how we use the substitution method. We take um, as the steps... Uh, we isolate a variable in one of our equations, we take that and we plug it into the other equation, we use that to solve to find our first variable, and then we plug that into either equation to find the second variable. So those are the steps that we have so that we can look back and figure out um, what we're doing. So that is solving by substitution.